couldn't tell you why because I'm certainly not ready. What else is new? Yeah, hi. Here we are. We're doing the thing, everybody. Uh, please like, subscribe, and comment below before you find out that this whole show is debauchery. It's going to get crazy. I don't know why. Our friend Will, William Benedict III, is here this evening. We're going to talk all about his Porsche build. He just recently, uh, I don't know if it's complete, but he's in the process of, There's or no it's, <laughs> he says, it's never done, uh, but of a 1970 911T awesome build that comes up to breakfast club uh we're gonna be talking to him about that and anything else that you guys want to mrs ryan is here as well hello and uh let's see you guys are here uh, guards rad's here tinker engineering hello hi francis zenjay is here and look who that he's looking down at his notes right now but producer mike is in canada for all this as well hello producer mike he's peace and love everybody <laughs> lovely to be here he's tagging along i love it uh so that's what's going on we've got a whole bunch of stuff to do we're going to fire it up right on now. Thanks for being with us, everybody. Please like, subscribe below. Go ahead, Will. Too much paint licking. Do you have to lick it or do you have to eat it? Do you have to eat it? Can you just lick it? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Guys, we're talking about paint way. here, but. <laughs> <laughs> uh, welcome back. Oh, did we do it? Oh, and. No, I don't want to do that. I do want to do that. Ah. Oh, it's a double. <laughs> it was a double. Sorry, Will. Uh, welcome back to the late night play set, everybody. Uh, allow me to. Get some buttons going, and then we'll continue the conversation that we were, should have been having on the air instead. Uh, I'm very happy that you are with us. My name is Jay Ryan. Nicole Ryan is to my right. It is Thursday, March 10th, 2022. And first order of business is uh, I ran out of here to go get you some medication. So let's get that going first. But let us please welcome the Instagram audience. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> there they are. What's up? Uh, Justin, aloha from Joyce. Tinker Engineering, you guys should buy Newcombs. Tinker Engineering, totally. Uh, just the one 5.7 million problems between here and there. Um, but uh, if somebody wants to uh, sponsor that deal and broker it for us, for sure, we will, uh, we will operate. We will operate for you. We love it up there. Uh, on the weekends, anyway. I don't know about always. 
And I, I don't think I want to own that. Play. That's not true. I don't want to own that. It sounds good. It's just like everybody else. It sounds good for five minutes. And then the moment you start playing the the real what the Fs of it all, I'm sorry, Will. I, Employees, somehow that some, you got to pay taxes. and Yeah, but I'm more noticing wherever you are, It's there's a dot through. There it is. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Wow. Okay. Will's about to be beamed up. <laughs> E.T. is uh, calling. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, it's just once you start thinking about it, it becomes like, why would anybody want to do it? I mean, you have to have a ton of money and a ton of time. That's the way I look at it. I mean, we have a ton of time, I guess, but <laughs> I don't, I don't want to. The idea of owning a bar sounds fun, but who really wants to do it? That place um, needs to be a passion project, I think. Like, you really have to love everything about it. Yeah, or somebody really who like wants to live in the mountains and have like, like you said, a a a, <laughs> a fix fixer upper. Um, yeah, you just go live up there in the cabin. It's a great, a lot of space. You could do anything with that space. Thirty five hundred square feet. I don't know why I'm selling Newcombs. Here I am pitching Newcombs to you. Uh, somebody else brought it up, but I appreciate it. Tinker Engineering. Uh, we are we are not the people. Jay Leno, not the person. Uh, uh, Magnus, not the person. Who else have other people asked us about? Like famous regulars up there that would potentially be able to swing a deal like that. Whoever they, the, all of the regulars that people keep saying over and over and over, they've all been here and we've asked them and nobody's interested. Um, I'm putting the financial hurdle in the way, but even if it wasn't, like... It's a nice pipe dream. Yeah, it's, it's just not, not for us. It's got to be the that. right, the right everything. So back to this, um, the medication, sticky vape, Tradecraft Farms. These are both Indica misses. And uh, your options today are, well, similar. <laughs> they look the same. They're not. One is Skywalker OG, and one is King Louie, which I know you've had both, but uh, I don't know if you have a preference. Skywalker. Skywalker. Please. All right. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course it is. Yeah, fucking. These guys are so clever. The mood. Oh, excuse me. wasn't quite as satisfying of a boop I thought it was going to be. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Will. Awesome. Here you go. Thanks. Uh, so the, uh, the, 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 the mood, the mood on the Skywalker OG is deep space. Because mm. of Skywalker. Well, I did it doing <laughs> yeah. I can't do that. Very well. Kazman. Where's the Kazman for that? He should do it. Mike, Mike Chisholm's a Star Wars guy. Uh, producer Mike, can you do the... Uh, the Chewbacca? I bet you can. <laughs> oh, there it is, yeah. <laughs> it takes somebody who like knows those movies to be able to do it well. I'm, I'm kind of just, I'm imitating everybody else who does it. Yeah. It's like people who do George Bush or any of the people from the 90s that were like impersonated a lot. It, they're just doing the people who did them on SNL. We're all doing Dana Carvey. Right. I feel like we missed that one, which I'm fine with. That election, that episode, what? That's Star Wars. Oh, Star Wars in general. Ugh. That's why I think we're okay together here. <laughs> who was who was the client? You had a client when we first met. Um, sorry to make it about us for a few minutes here, but <laughs> husband and wife, this is what happened. <laughs> um, uh, uh, we had, uh, you had a client when we first met that was convinced uh, that I was lying to you when I said I had never read a comic book, which is a record that stands today, by the way. But 11 years ago, was it Craig? Rob, I think. But Cordry. It was Cordry. It was 100% Cordry. No one could get a read in you, so then <laughs> they couldn't get a read in me. So. Uh, I was playing the Please Everybody game, Be Anything for Everybody. There's an Everlong, Everclear song about it. Everything for, every, everything everything for Everyone for or something everyone. like that. Oof. Yeah. It's, uh, being a people pleaser is not the way to go through life. It should be a short-term game. It should be something you <laughs> you try for a minute and you realize, oh, this is no way to live my own life. Uh, but I did for a lot of years there in the middle, especially in the production industry. You're always pleasing somebody. You always got to please somebody. I did that publicity too. Like you ha yours was a service industry. You Jesus had to. Jesus Christ. <laughs> go pl more, please. Go on. <laughs> well, because... 
your job, you've said it before on this show, like we were professionally invisible and my job literally was to be cut out of photos. Yeah, yeah. But how many years into you doing your job did you realize you were supposed to wear black and shit because of that? Years. Many years. Like Every photo I have of you or I've ever seen of you is you in a beautiful dress totally right. eclipsing whoever you are next to. Or well, at least their wives, because usually you're with men on the carpet. But either way, you look like the hottie patati on the arm in your red dress with the boobs hanging out and the whole thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. No. Oh, and everyone in the world, this is, an, <laughs> this is the irony, but I want people to know this. Every woman in the world, and I'm guessing most men who look for it, complimented your legs in the old day. It's crazy irony because they don't work anymore. But that was a thing that across the board, and I think you were pretty proud of, every single <laughs> I hate to... And your boobs. Don't get me started on your boobs. No, but people used to always, I guess they would probably compliment your legs because they couldn't politically correctly compliment your boobs. That's probably what was going on now in hindsight. But always the women were like, God, Nicole's legs. Look at the, they were like lusting over your legs. He's definitely making the point that they wanted to compliment your boobs. <laughs> but couldn't only because of the climate, but they definitely wanted to compliment your they were, Everything <laughs> was muscular and tight. So it was easy to come. She's toy, toy like a tiger. Not anymore. Toy, Not toy anymore. like a tiger. What is that from? <laughs> I think you're just talking, man. I don't know. <laughs> Sounds like Sean Connery, but probably the SNL. No, version of Sean no. Connery. It, you're, oh my God, you're That's so Austin close. Powers, I remember what it was as you were describing it. You are so close. It's Mike Myers from SNL, yeah. doing Gold Member, which was basically some kind of version of right. everything you're talking about. Impression Inception, I'm down. It was, uh, he loves, I love gold. He's tight, tight like a tiger. Yes. I don't know that the impression's so good that it needed to be done three times. <laughs> Nevertheless, it's the, <laughs> this is what you get. This is what you get. Uh, we are very happy that everybody's with us. Um, it, we're off the rails. It's it, That's how it's going to be from now on, I think. So get used to it or be gone. Um Raiden Motors is here this evening. William Benedict III, and I don't know if you saw their will, but Manuel Carrillo says, we thirds have to stick together. Uh, I had a feeling he might be watching, so shout out to the Manuel Carrillo III, who is not feeling well today. Uh, but I'm glad he's still alive and watching the show, so that helps. Same. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to be talking about Will's portion in a few minutes. In the meantime, uh, the Pants Show. The Pants Show is getting a lot of, um, what do you call... Backdoor feedback? I don't know. Correct. I'm getting tremendous. No, it's not that. It's not about the people watching it, but the amount of messages and things I've gotten because we did that pants show is kind of amazing. And even though I didn't want to do it, I mean, what, <laughs> here, producer Mike, I'm going to bring you in here to pull the curtain back a little bit. Is that okay? The, I didn't. In neither one of us intended on doing that show yesterday. Uh, the, the, what, what came behind it was just a lot of uh, kismet and things in the universe sort of all came together. Uh, yeah. That was undeniable. And he, uh, producer Mike, had his own things going on in the same universe uh, that were undeniable. And he, and I always support this, he was moved to, uh, <laughs> this is how I used to make magic happen when I was a kid. You get to that kind of crazy, weird, almost kind of manic -y state, and then you kind of like decide to, that the buzz is coming from the right part of your body and you decide to jump, you know what I mean? And he made a video and sent it off to uh, his friends, people he knows over at Worldwide Pants. But he used, he dropped my name in there too. And it was like, you know, oh, well, you know, me and Jay Ryan. And while it's true, we had had the conversation. We didn't have the conversation about, you know, firing this thing off yet. So I thought to myself, well, it's not a bad idea. And sometimes I'm in my own way with things in life, as we all can be. So I took it as a, well, you know what? Maybe he unintentionally is giving me a little bit of a push in a place that neither one of us realized we needed it. So... Yesterday all kind of came together like that. It was just sort of, we had all that good news to share that was all Dave related. We may as well throw it into a show. And I was more comfortable at least putting out some sort of a, this is the type of thing we could do versus just, hey, we have these ideas. And I mean, like, I don't know, whatever. Like Trust they can, see, you can at least see this resume yeah. versus uh, somebody saying they did something and they're capable of it. And no, you can trust. <laughs> no, you can trust us. Come on. Um, so, yeah, that, that was basically it. But the traction, whatever you call the whatever the behind the scenes, I'm calling it backdoor fucking mess, all the messages, all of the uh, things, really uh, surprising to me. Because, like, now all of a sudden there are people who do have their photo at this desk when it was at the museum. And they're, I've given them the email and they're going to email me so we can get information like that. Somebody else has uh, blueprints to the original set from Kathleen Ankers, who was my, you know, that's my awesome. little mentor when I was a kid. 
uh, drawn all my little pictures and stuff. So um, I don't want to go too far into this, but um, I'm really glad we did it. I didn't necessarily intend to do it, neither did Mike, but we did it. it uh, it's done. And uh, it's not something we're going to mention every single day about, you know, oh, and here's the Dave check-in. Like, we might get to that at some point. But right now, it's not that. This is just going to t- continue on with the show and hopefully grow with uh, Mike's input as, um, as both creative and, and logistic um, producer. And uh, I want it to I'm be our version of the Oprah watch, Jay. Say it again? I want it to be our version of the Oprah watch from back in the day. All right. Well, it's fine. All right. Because you said it. Here, I'm pretty sure I still have this in here. Hang on. I, I may have deleted it because I did not need it anymore. Um, yeah, I must have just deleted it the other day. It's hilarious. Oh, no. Here it is. Here we go. Here we go, Mike. What? <laughs> Yeah, we uh, we right before we, the pandemic. We had, we had started that. I'm pretty sure I even like wrote Dave Log on a on a notepad to like start doing that. I don't, you know, we didn't ever, <laughs> we didn't have any writers uh, or anything back then, so we I don't think we did anything with it. Um, also, like, how long does that go on for? We hadn't gotten Dave for like a month or whatever. So anyway, sure. I'm still pulling for it though, especially more so now. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. I love Let's you, make buddy. Make it happen, Nate. So more to come on that. Uh, real quick, East Coast feed, New York City. Ready? Great. Roll yes. it, Hal. So Mrs. Ryan, Brooke and the Cavs man, here she is. We are in the Hudson Yards on the High me. Line, which Mr. Ryan, I'm sure you know, is the elevated train. They turn into a park here in Manhattan. It looks like this in the rail yards are right here. So it's cool. You know, a bunch of cool architecture and shit like that. That's it, we got a weekend date night. Right, baby? Say hi to everybody. She's really excited. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of New York City, a little check-in from New York City. All right. Uh, okay. And uh, and then the only other thing I have to do, I don't have to do it, but I want to do it, is a GVBC TBT. It's a TBT because it's Thursday. <laughs> Throwback Thursday because it's Thursday. Um, and it's a GVBC one from a couple years ago. Uh, I don't know. We haven't seen it in a while, but um, somebody posted something that reminded me of it, I think, because it was that day and it was – Shortly before they closed. Some, okay. Sometime in the last year before they closed, you know? All right. Can't wait. Now here's a GBBC. TBT. <laughs> Roll it up. Yeah. 
looks like Gar Dredd drove in there. I was gonna say, where's the Gar Dredd? This was right after it happened. But wait, there's more. All right, everybody, stop crying. Wipe your tears. Wipe your tears. We are back. We are back. And it occurred to me that the Instagram audience, because of how I have this rigged up, you guys can hear us through the broadcast now, if I'm not mistaken. Through the broadcast now. I heard my voice do that. Uh, but if I'm not mistaken, you probably can't hear the, the... Could you guys hear the videos we played? Or no? I don't know. Can't wait to break bread with you here. Oh, man, good stuff here. I love it. All these good people. Uh, okay, so that's it, right? Commercials. Commercials. Oh, boy. Mrs. Ryan loves commercials. This is where I get excited. All right. Uh, oh, it's the new one. I, this is exciting. Um, oh, I should have taken a look at it again after last week, though, because I remember I didn't do this well. Seri series 1 Film Spot. Take one. Uh, this episode has been brought to you in part by Series 1 Films. Series 1 Films helps automotive brands create engaging cinematic content for social media and advertising. To grab and hold your ideal customer's attention, check them out at Series 1 Films. That's number one. Series 1 Films. Number one. Uh, also, if I'm not mistaken, I believe our friend Taylor Hendricks, uh, who is behind the Series 1 Films, will be up at Good Vibes Breakfast Club tomorrow if you have any interest in talking to him about this ad or what he does for a living. Uh, oh, and this is my personal favorite. I'm wearing the shirt as my undershirt currently. Uh, they say... All which separates men and boys is the coverage of their toys. What types of toys, Mrs. Ryan? Collector. That's right! <laughs> Collector cars, collector cars. It doesn't even have to be collectors. Any cars, really, but especially collector cars he specializes in. Uh, and collections of all sorts. If you've got uh, coins, plates, silver, I don't know, collections of, well, movie props in our case, things like that, uh, or the automobiles, buildings, businesses, anything that can be insured, s licensed in most states. St. Clair Insurance shops top providers so you get the best coverage for all of your toys. Check out St. Clair Insurance by simply going to get your computer out of the closet. Then put it on the dining room table, plug that sucker in, and dial up the internet. Once you're on the internet, you're going to go to Google. When you're at the Google, you www. Dot that sucker and go to Mrs. Ryan's favorite part, which is coverageforyourtoys.com. 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 Did I get it? You did, and we had a little backup there, which was absolutely stunning. Thank you. Uh, all right, so the jig is up. William Benedict the Third is also Will on camera three. If nobody, if if anybody didn't know that, so uh, we're very happy he's here again. If he looks familiar, he was here a couple weeks ago with the uh, the Gunner Ment show. Uh, I don't know if you should call it the Gunner Ment show, but the show where Gunner was here as well. And um, we didn't even scratch the surface of all the things that I intended to talk to Will about. So we have invited him back. He is here tonight, and we're going to do a quick break and tell you about oh so delicious hot sauce, the hot sauce made from bears, and then. And then, and then, Will, William Benedict III on camera three. Will on camera three? Is William Benedict III? This all is just fucking crazy pants. Anyway, he's going to be sitting in that chair when we come back right after this. Mrs. Ryan, it's oh so delicious hot sauce. The hot sauce. Made by bears. Oh, so delicious. It's the hot sauce made by bears. Garlic and serrano mixed with love and care. You can put it on your eggs, pour it on your rice. It's great on a leg, it's better on a slice. It's oh, so delicious. It's the hot sauce made by bears. Oh, so delicious hot sauce. Great on everything except oatmeal. Get your bottle today at ohsodelicious.org. One dollar from every bottle sold goes to the National Military Family Association. <laughs> I'm Johnny Lieberman, and you're watching LMP. What does LMP stand for? Late Night Place. Oh, yeah, that's true. I've been on there. Yeah, good show. <laughs> you should like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Mm -hmm. There you go. What are you driving today? 63 356B. <laughs> hey, 111. What are you driving today? Balls 
after this, I'll tell you that. Pedal down, yeah! Good stuff, good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. All right. Uh, oh, I guess I do. Do I do? Yeah, I'm going to do. Here. I got it in here now, right? Do this. Right. We're back to the commercial. And then uh, our guests wanted to come into bubbles, so I'll get the machine going there. And then I'll tell you that William Benedict III is going to be here, uh, or he is here, and uh, I don't have an intro for you because we don't do that. Now i got to start writing intros. And uh, and here he is. Give him a big round of applause. <laughs> ah, down he goes. <laughs> that removed oh we will oh, this let me know bad. when you're let me know when you're done <laughs> it's a little wet but a little wet mostly good that is uh it's wet air right it's air wrapped in wet that's right <laughs> so it is <laughs> and slowly but surely they will all stop all right so i, I came here uh i forgot you're the guy who talks around oh, yeah, this so I let do. me set it up for I'll, you i'll and make sure you, it stays you can where it be wherever you want to be how does that, that feel? I th I'm going to dodge it, but I'll do my best not to dodge it. Because you're trying to see me around it? Is that I, what it is? I just don't know what I'm doing, man. Let's here, then. Is that better? Sure. <laughs> you don't care. Uh, I am happy you're here, Will. I'm delighted to be here. When you asked me, I was like, what am I, what am I going to talk about? What, what, what are we going to talk? And then it occurred to me, like, that's not really my pride. We're going to talk about myself, talk about my cards. I can flap these gums for hours unabated so we just, we want you to just wind me up and point me and point me somewhere <laughs> <laughs> i apologize for being late though it's four miles uh somehow thought, it took 20 minutes i thought you were on time those great southern california roads i thought you were on time i thought you were on time i want to talk about i want to start with your porsche your 70t yeah. because uh i really wanted to talk about it last time and i think because of the cow car situations, which I still want to touch on again this time as well. But I think just with everything that was going on, plus Gunner and his pig car, we and your car, your cow cars, his pig car. It's a lot of animals. Too much old McDonald's got a goddamn car show going on for me. So enough. um I want to start with the T. Okay. You tell me about why you even started thinking about T. Then tell me about your research process because some of sure. those questions up at GVBC were very humorous to me. And then what happened to make you buy one and then what have you done? Uh well so I've always loved the air cooled 911. Uh it's my father's fault. <laughs> he he always loved the same thing. We had a 912 when I was a kid with like rusted out floors and we got it run in and all this stuff. Um, but I, I, I had a, a, an air-cooled 911 that I, I sold um, for something I bought off Bring a Trailer that turned out to be a piece of shit. If I'm uh, not mistaken, when we met you, you actually had yeah. an air-cooled 911. Yes. And we were like, oh, this guy's cool. He comes up to the Porsche brand. I, th I thought thing. it was my dead man's car. It was, it was, a, it was an 89 wide-body backdate G50 coupe. It was, it was lovely. Um, but it had been smashed, uh, unbeknownst to me. Oh. Um, so it just didn't drive right, and I couldn't get it to drive right. I brought it to places, um, and so I just, I decided to just eat eat the loss, get rid of it, and not think about it anymore. Ooh, eat the loss! Had you just hung on to it, you could have sold well, a wrecked car. Well, I mean, for... <laughs> if I had, if, if I had held on to any of the things that I had, you yeah. know, five, ten years ago. That's true. Uh, I could retire. No, I don't know. Um, no, that's true. You almost no matter what it is that we've had in our past, like it, it has yeah. its time. It comes around again. Uh, and you forget like insurance, garage space. Like it costs money to have these these cars lurking around. Um, but uh, you uh, have too many cars. That's you don't. It's not sir, like you have one or sir, two. The last time I was here, the guy next to me had dozens of cars. I think I have a very <laughs> reasonable single digit, single hand, may maybe. That's a really good point. If you're, if we're going, if it's like if, if, if everything bad, is relative, like if you feel was... bad about yourself, just compare yourself to someone <laughs> terrible, and you know, then you then you'll feel great. It's great. Gunnar not only had dozens of Porsches, he has them on an island of Hawaii, and whatever. It's just such a very small yeah. world. It's kind of amazing how they all got there. He got them all there. Oh, so many things. Uh, you have a lot of cars, also though. Do we I, should we go down the list of what if, you if had, or like do you want to? Wanna... Uh, what I've had? No, 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 not ever. I'm... Uh, I have the MGB. We'll, we'll start with where you were. No, no, we'll continue the story with where you were with the air-cooled Porsche that you were going to get rid of and everything. But when you got rid of that, you had multiple cars at that point. Since we've known you, you've always had multiple cars. Yes. Uh, what did I, you start with when we met you? Uh, it was that it was that 89 911. Yep. I sold that thing. I pushed Porsches out of my 
mind for a while because I was so burned from the experience. Uh, I wound up with an MGB that I bought from the, the original owner. He, he bought it off the showroom floor in, in 1968, drove it 150,000 miles, and then died. And then I bought it <laughs> from his, his estate. He was a British car mechanic, so uh, the thing worked, which was pretty – actually, it threw a fan belt on the way home, so that, that it left me stranded. I had to have it towed on the drive back. That's never a great sign, but uh, <laughs> it had been sitting. <laughs> you know, It hadn't been driven much recently. Uh, after the former owner's uh, passing, um, so well, so that, I, I, I mean, right, sure, right. Yeah, couldn't drive it much. There it is. Uh, <laughs> so I, I had that thing, and, and, that, and that thing was great. Um, and then what happens is you go up to GVBC and you see all these other cars, and you're like, Oh yeah, oh, well he's got that one. He's got this one's pretty cool. That happens. Uh, and and you start to rationalize in your head, like you know what, probably a 50 year old car that costs uh, almost 100 grand. Like let's. Yeah, that's a great idea. We should do that. It's like an investment, right? If only we had held on to the car. If only I had bought some Ferraris five years ago oh, or whatever. Sure. Whatever they want to be. Um, so that, then I was figuring I, I would find another, just a regular um, 911 and maybe backdated or something like this because I'm, I'm not afraid of modified cars or anything like this. You modify your cars I like do. this. I just – What were, happened? I, you had, Hang on. It was one MG and then you showed up in a different MG. Like there was multiple oh, MGs well, and then you had a different thing and then you, you there was – one of those MGs had a V8 yes. Land Rover motor uh, in it. So I, I, saw, I saw an orange MGB on, on the internet and it had a Rover V8 in it and I said, well, that seems cool. So oh, it I already went, had it. You didn't yeah, put that Yeah, I didn't put that one okay. in. Um, but I went and I drove it and it – it was great, and I bought it, and it was great, and that's when I found the the, uh, the green MGB, and I bought that one just because it was it seemed like a, a really good car to, to have, um, and so then I had two MGBs for for quite a while, which, and then you bought a mini, like you had a mini. Oh yeah, I bought I bought. See what well, I mean? COVID, COVID hit. <laughs> I forget all the. I, I, I keep a list somewhere. Um, COVID hit. And so I, I, I've always wanted a classic Mini, and I couldn't find any justification for having one. They're just really cool. They're really fun. Mm. Um, and I figured I got some kind of bug in my ass to convert something to electric because it seemed like an interesting thing to do. I was st- stuck at home. I had a garage and nothing to do. You're also like an engineer guy. Yeah, I'm a, yeah. I'm a, I'm a software engineer by, by trade, um, but you can't drive software, so uh, <laughs> I, I mess with cars and, and, and whatnot. You know, I grew up with Legos. This is what happens. Oh. Um, oh, yeah, Connecticut kid, too. Yeah. Speaking of Legos, I forgot about you know, that. You're, it's the winter. You're inside. You're messing around with Legos. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, but it, they're also a Connecticut company. Is that That's right. You, Enfield. Head, you, you got seen, it. I've exactly. seen the, I've seen the, Lego, uh, the Lego headquarters. Um, Legos, Legos are great. I highly recommend them. Don't step on them. But other than that, they're fantastic. You know, I don't agree with it. I'm the only guy <laughs> I, I know who doesn't ag- I do not agree. I, th- I, I hate Legos. I disagree with Legos. I do. Hate them. Have never liked them. Don't like them today. I'm against them. I'm, I'm anti-Lego. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. Because I don't understand what you can do with them that you can't do with something else. Like, they patented that interlocking thing. Yeah, they stick together. So <laughs> what? <laughs> so what? They're jagged. They're hard. Like, you can't... It, Lego sets where the the car like nothing is the, the parts don't eat. the Porsche GT3 that everyone loves I think it's the stupidest thing in the world remember it was back ordered for like years people were paying a thousand dollars to get them on Amazon oh, and man, shit man that's air cooled Legos now man oh I don't get it I don't get it so I'm not a Lego guy I don't and, and, and at the end of the day no matter what you make it's all pixelated because it's all <laughs> This is true. All this is true. Uh, but I, I can sit in a room alone for quite a long time with Legos, which was an important part of my childhood. So, uh, Do you decide what you're going to make first, or do you just bucket of Legos, let, dump it uh, out? I let, the, I let the pieces lead me. And oh, then I sometimes like I try to build things. Usually what I do is take Then it's a, art. I take something that exists, and then I, I modify it so that it's something different. Like I bought a helicopter set, and I made it a plane, or, or vice versa. I can't remember. No way. Shit like that. You know, I don't know. Okay. Um, Again, though, that's you and your modifications. <laughs> the perfect Lego set was never invented, so I had to build it myself, um, which is a paraphrasing of. All right, I want. I can. Sta- I'm gonna. You know, I assume I the will, audience can catch that one. <laughs> I'm just thinking to myself. I will go in this direction for days, but I promised everybody that we would talk about the 70T, so we have to do it. We have to do it. Is there really an audience, or we just talk to each other in this room? Uh, no, there's really an audience. Am I muted? Someone tell You're me muted. if I'm muted. It's better to mute me. Uh, somebody over here says, uh, I love how the Corvette was the only car parked close to the highway. Also, nice to see what the inside of Newcombs looks like. It says Manuel Correa. Uh, so what, what else we got? We, we, the, the V8 Vantage, that was a, that's a great thing. Um, 
I, I had that thing, and then, oh, uh, there's the the cow truck. Oh, I bought a Nissan Leaf. I stuffed it in that Mini. I guess that counts as a car that I owned. Because um, that's how you powered the yeah, Mini. Yeah. Yeah. When I came to California, I had a Chevy Astro. What do you do with the drive. Leaf afterwards once you've taken all I the I had to pay out. someone to drag it away. I was curious. <laughs> do you salvage like, it? For, yeah, yeah. I for mean, the... like, it had perfect interior. It had, like, brake components and all kinds of useful oh so it's not even uh i was thinking like oh scrap metal no it's actually went to somebody to be a car again well no i mean it got scrapped in the end i tried to sell it for like a hundred dollars and (laughs) and nobody nobody wanted the nissan leaf bring a trailer yeah yeah. literally oh man bid on that thing uh i had to i had to pay i had to pay a scrapyard to come and tow it away and they were and they were like we'll only take it if it has the title I'm like, oh, I have, I oh have right, because otherwise so. it seems like a uh, a cut, chopped uh, car. Yeah, something yeah. like that. <laughs> exactly that. Yeah, he was like, I have the keys and the title. He wanted the keys and the title. I'm like, all right, man, it doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> no, but that's that's yes, to yes. prove. Yeah, it's a yes, legality yes. thing. Uh, uh, it wasn't that guy's first strip car, even though it was probably yours. No, yeah, this this was my first. I, I I guess I pulled all the useful things. And so, what got you looking in the direction of 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 Long Hood Tea? Because uh, well, you just I, said I, you were thinking about a backdate again or something. Yeah, I, I like the way they look. Um, I think they're they're my favorite era of 9-11. But I always, I always wrote them off because uh, they're very expensive. And when I was on the East Coast, I was driving my 80s 9-11. That was my daily driver. Like all the roads are very nice for old cars. Mm. And um, it's, something that I could, it's something that I could park in, in, in Brooklyn and let get dirty. And it still looks cool. I'm still. I, I just made the decision that I wasn't going to worry about the cosmetics of the car in order to own the thing. Um, and you know, I, and I love that car. And so I thought maybe I'll do a backdate. And then uh, I, I started running numbers. And with these long hood prices going up, they're going to go up forever. Same with the '80s cars as well. Uh, it just seemed like if I just reached a little bit. I could have a, a proper long hood and not have to mess with the back date and, and what comes with it. Right. Um, and because, I, you know, Southern California has these really nice roads, I didn't have to worry about rust as much. Uh, Angela's Crest is <laughs> lovely and smooth and, and, and uh, doesn't really need AC as much, often as much. Um, so, I, I, you know, I just kind of kept my, kept my eyes open and looked around, and all the ones that I saw were, were crazy expensive. Uh, and, um, I, I, I keep seeing them at GVBC and I started like looking at people, individuals ones and what did they do to it and how much did you pay for this and what did you get for that and what right. happened? Right. I started Once it was in your questions. mind, you started. Yeah. Yeah. And then this one popped up on bring a trailer, which I don't recommend anyone ever buy a car from bring a trailer or any of these auction sites. Uh, they're ruining the community. We can launch on that anytime you want, but that's okay. Uh, but, but this one was, this one was local. Um, I, I was able to, to see it in person. I couldn't drive it because of some bullshit with the driveway was being worked on or whatever the hell. There's always some excuse with bring a trailer. Weird. Um, but I was able to see it. I looked at the chassis. The It was it was square and the paint was good. Um, so like the body was good and everything else I can fix. Um, so I, I liked it. Uh, I, I started, I realized that I, I'd never, since I'd never driven one, I'd never really been in one, I should get that out of the way. So one day I was at GVBC um, and Juice, I've come to know its name. Oh, yeah, all right. So this was later. I'm thinking of the first one. I remember you had, You walked up to some guy you didn't know in a car you hadn't seen before, and it was a yellow one. Do you remember that? Did I? Yeah, there was a yellow one. with a. You don't remember the yellow one? And you went up to the owner. Uh, I have and CRS you disease, like, which is a disease where you can't remember shit. I, I'm aware of it. I, uh. I suffer also. No, it was very funny to me because – it was only funny to me because the person you were asking is so big and famous to me. It's not that they would ever think that way. They're the most humble person I've ever met in my life. That's probably what makes them so awesome. But in my mind, they're a fucking superstar because they are so capable. They're so talented. It was Jeff Zwart. You walked up to oh, Jeff no Zwart. Shit, <laughs> and you go, so, tell me about your yellow 911T. And he was like, ah, oh, well, um... <laughs> <laughs> I like it a lot. Yeah. And, uh... <laughs> that, happens, that happens quite regularly. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be talking to someone and then find out later that there's some big deal somewhere. And I'm like, oh, they seem cool. They That's cool why things. you're awesome. And, and there's no judgment in that. It was just to me. It was only because I was. Ignorance I'm a fanboy. Because you weren't a fanboy, but I was. So to me, it was so, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I just I just wanted to, to, to hear and, and, and be in one of these things. Um, so And with your help, I was able to commandeer Kurt. 
There we uh, go. Now, in his, in now his to juice dream. the orange one. Yeah, and and he took me for a spin in that thing. His, his is an S-Spec engine, so it was quite a bit swifter. Um, but it was great. Oh. It sounded cool. It was light. It was nimble. Yeah. It only starts to move at about ninety, uh, and that's that can be fun. Um, and so the the next day was when the the auction was up, and I was like, all right, I'm going to try to buy this car. Uh, I had a number in mind. Oh, so between I'm sorry to cut you yeah. off. Between when you were pretty sure and you got the juice that you had already seen the auction right and it was oh so great I, I timing started, i started to get a little aggressive so as soon as i saw this car i was like holy shit maybe i should buy this car if, it, if it'll if it'll go for for like less than 80 something like that i should buy this car and i can work on it until i'm dead um, so i i started getting uh well i mean which is pretty much the case uh so i i got a little more aggressive trying to get inside one of these long hoods the, the next friday um so the the auction the, the, the hammer price was sixty nine four twenty, which I wow. think is deeply amusing to me. Well, it is, in, but can you considering the market? It's a great price. Yeah, you did well. If you think three years ago, it's effing ridiculous. It's also sex and drugs, um, which is which is nice, <laughs> uh, it, it, and it's appropriate for this car, which has come to be known as the Schlempo. It's the, it's the Excuse slut. Me? Schlempo. Uh, Schlempo is is a German Schlempo. word. Uh, I have license plates coming that say Schlempo. Uh, and, it, and it means oh schlemper er uh, there's no r but there's an e okay schlemper it means it's like a german word for like un, unkempt and promiscuous Ooh. Uh, and and i think that <laughs> lends itself well to uh, a car that has a few a few niggling issues and the word slut on the back of it do, uh, will the license plate bracket uh, say like you know uh, not me the car the car <laughs> <laughs> i'll have to come up with some uh, Something. Some, some, something there. Well, I just don't want people to think that you're that way, because I don't think I don't hey man, think of you that it's, way. It's, it's fine. We can, oh, we can, you're we can, okay with it. it. Okay. <laughs> we, 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 take, we take all kinds. There's no uh, there's no there's no shame in it. All right, it's I a see. New century. Okay. Uh, so I, I wound up I wound up winning on the sixty nine four twenty bid, which I hopefully somebody was like, oh, I was going to bid bid more, but let let's let this guy have it. Yeah. Uh, so I bought this car, and it was it's it was mostly good. It was like f- farting and. What uh, color? And popping on the way home. What color? Uh, oh, was that a local car? Yeah, it was in. Um, Genius. It was the, the guy who owned it for like decades and decades. He he bought it. I think he had it for like forty years or something like this. Um, he lived in Inland Empire, so someone bought it off the showroom floor. They had it for a few years, and this guy bought it, and then he he drove it a hundred and. 50,000 miles and then died. Beautiful. Uh, I, actually, I mean, sorry I, about the death, but... <laughs> well, I, 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 I don't know if he died, but I was only ever in contact with his son. I, I wound up getting in touch with him to try to, like, get record, whatever so implica- records I yeah, had and see what the story is, is with this thing. Um, so it, it's never left Southern California. Hmm. Um, and there's no rust in anything, and that was my that was my primary concern. Um, so rust. I, rust. Yeah. And and what did you say what color it was? Because I asked you a bunch of questions uh, at once there. It's some-ass blue. It's just some blue... Uh, it's some ass blue metallic. It, it, it used to be signal yellow. Uh, the, the previous owner repainted it because I guess he wanted a blue car. I loved the color, which was a big part of why I bought it at all. Um, it looks uh, great buddy, in photos. Your buddy Reggie, I'm sorry to interrupt you, sure. but your buddy Reggie Watts is uh, is texting right now. What up, gangster? Yeah, I know, and I'm pretty sure he's on the air as well. So I just want to say hi to you. Everybody's We're on the air on the as air. well. Uh, we'll see you later. Here's Mrs. Ryan. As Ted Word said, I love your noises. Is that what? That was Edward's <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's funny. All right, back to you. Uh, sure. Um, <laughs> so, some ass blue Porsche, uh, and, and I, I really like the color. And I don't care that it's repainted a non Porsche color. I don't care that it's not original. Well, that that so that's probably what allowed me to get it. You know, because if it was all original, everything the it numbers would have gone for yeah. more money, and I wouldn't have been able to, to buy it. Also, you would have then been reconciled. Like, this is the perfect car for you. It's, yeah. It, I'm not afraid. There's new chips on the hood I'm kind of pissed about, but I'm just letting it go. You know, I'm going to rise above it. I'm a professional. Well, you um, can't drive it on the crest yeah, and I not know. expect chip. The people who do, I don't understand the, the logic and the philosophy. Like, uh, you can't, you can't, you got to, something's got to give. Sure. I would much rather drive it, um, particularly on one of the best roads in the country, and maybe you catch a few chips, that's fine. Yeah. Rather than have it sit in my garage. Um, I, I personally will say easily the best in the country, although I certainly haven't driven every fucking road in the country. But I will say of the big ones, Tale of the Dragon, of the few, the big ones that I've, <clears throat> I will say it's the best. I will then say it's probably one of the best in the world. It's world class. It's yeah. a world class road. 
Um, so there's a there's a little there's a little bit as as I was sitting in traffic on the way here, I was thinking to myself that there around Los Angeles are some of the best roads you can drive the PCH, uh, Angeles Crest, and all those mountain roads. They're they're so good, um, but on the East Coast, a lot of the regular ass roads in like Connecticut or upstate New York are they're like eighty percent as good. I'm, I'm and so they're with just you. Regular to get to the store, I'm driving through backwoods, elevation changes, all kinds of stuff. I'm so with you on that. So there's I'm t- I'm conflicted in that. I don't I don't have you done any of what we're talking about uh, recently, like with modern cars. Because I've I've often wondered if the cars have now and both size and uh, power have outpaced all of those roads. Perhaps I, I had a I had a monster of a 911 on the on the East Coast. It was a it was an M four nine one with a three point six in it. Whoa! It, it used to be a race car, so it was like a twenty five to twenty seven hundred pound car. This and it would flew, rev. It flew. Oh, it flew. Whoa! Um, that that was a monster. And that so was you've a, had two M four nine ones. No, that was the same one. I dragged that to California because I was like, never going to sell this one. It's oh, great. Oh, okay. Uh, and then I sold it for the turd from Bring a Trailer, uh, which, which again, just pushing that out of the mind. I was just not worried oh, about that. Oh, man, I misunderstood. So I thought that the one we met you with was the first one no. and the 491. I didn't realize there was one you loved to buy that one, I, and that's why it's such a turd in your yeah, brain. Yeah, it, it cost me more than just, I the, somehow, just the cash. I missed it, and I'm sorry. I got you now. No good. Uh, so, <laughs> oh, that sucks. You know, I, I had that car. I had, an M, I had an E39 M5 and an E46 M3, and those were fantastic. And I, I don't know that uh, – th- those cars were fantastic on that road, and my, my 87 911 was also fantastic on, that, on those roads. Um, they're not like super fast roads, but they're like they're windy and they're pretty open. And as long as you don't hit a fucking dare, they're also highly technical. Tons yeah. of hoopties, tons of camber. There's a lot going on, and uh, and you can apex everything, yeah. every and, single and thing. And lovely trees, and um, and if you if you like snow, you know you find a, a little rotary intersection when it snows, and everyone else is not on the road. You can just drift around that thing for a couple minutes and then be on your way and it's it's quite a the parking lots and shit yeah, yeah for yeah, sure yeah. yeah there's nothing like growing a, up as a kid in the east coast right yeah if that's the the one i i do miss some some of that aspect of the the winter from the east coast did you ever used to go to the old train you know the old the old steam train in essex i don't and think the I, river boat and all that stuff I don't by think mystic I no okay no <laughs> it's something i used to do with my dad on gillette castle you remember that you ever do that any I of that stuff do the gillette castle. okay okay my my Connecticut. American you were in a different part long. of Connecticut, and we always kind of stayed kind of. We were always by the coast, so like even though we, you know, yeah. we grew up we're Wilton area, and we always kind of for whatever reason everything was always kind of by yeah. the coast. My dad, I guess like that's Ridgefield, where he grew up. Richfield, Pound Ridge. Richfield is uh, as far inland just because we were on the the well, we were on the border of all that stuff. Yeah. Because Wilton, we were right on the edge of New Canaan, obviously. Yep. Thirty three <laughs> and thirty seven. Yeah. Those are the those are the spots. It's hilarious. It's amazing. We were at the the Wilton end of thirty three. Yep. Thirty three and one oh six. Yes, yes, indeed. That's uh, amazing. It's so amazing because there's no. I mean, it's been a long time since I've been home, so I can't even. I'm forgetting this shit. I'm forgetting shit I grew up with. So for it to even, I guess it's like speaking a foreign language. Like, oh, it's nice yeah. that I can speak Spanish with my friend Will. <laughs> or when you go back, you'll be like, oh, this is cool, and then it'll be traffic that you'd never experienced. That you, yeah, everything's one lane roads. <laughs> yeah, and but there's there's just there's twice as many people that live there now as ten years ago or twenty years, oh. whenever the hell we, we were back there driving. Around. Oh, so what we're experiencing here is actually happening everywhere. Oh, with yeah. the traffic. Dude, everyone around. keeps having these kids, man. There's just so many kids coming out <laughs> every year. There's more people. It's unbelievable. You need you you need a segment. You need a you need a whole segment. You need a. As long as, you know what grinds my gears. If if it's just me running my mouth spur of the moment, that's let's it. do a segment. That's but it. Once I start editing video, I'm like, is anything worth it? Why am I alive? No, we do it live. Fuck it, we'll do it live. Fuck it, we'll do it live. You write it, and we'll do it live. <laughs> what were we talking about? I had a car. Nothing. I just wanted to Hal Gurney. I just wanted to cut to Mike for a second because of the Hal Gurney of it all. Uh, uh, um, uh, Is that Mike, the Mike the producer? Yeah. I appreciate his commitment to Wayne Gretzky. It's a, it's the <laughs> biggest Thanks, man. picture out of all of them, right? I mean, yeah, and he's got the hair. He's got the right hair like that. When, oh, that's true, too. He when personally. Wayne, when Wayne goes, that'll be the hair that he's remembered by. You're right, the bun. Is it a bun? Do you call it a bun? I'm sorry it's if I just mullet. if you're not supposed it's, to. Call no, no, no. He's talking about he's talking about Wayne's blow dried '90s hair. Oh, that, Wayne's that hair. Is, I thought he meant you with your bun there, because yeah. you you also could be you know that's kind of a, a hockey player thing when they when they grow it out, but they, they either shave it or they grow it out. You know, it's yeah. always something one or the other. 
No? Yeah, I definitely got the hockey hair going on. But Wayne is the I'm not a sports he's the man. I don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither, but I have Canadian friends, so Wayne is a, a demigod up there. Oh yeah. Well, I don't know if you know this or not, but Mrs. Ryan used to one of her big clients back in the day was a she used to have some athletes too, like Serena Williams was a pretty big one. Sean Avery was a, like a r- really big hockey player. Uh, for both the Kings and the New York Rangers. So, uh, so many people, like when they find out, like she's worked with so many celebrities in the world, so many celebrities, <laughs> so many effing celebrities, everybody who's famous today. And then somebody will find out, like some sports fan, you know, find like, you work with Sean Avery! Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they just like, th- th- that's all they ever want to talk to Do you her like about. M&Ms? From- what was the this? Yes, yes. Was all of that! Did he say stuff? Was he cool? Did he- was he ever mentioned to me? Did he mention me? Did he mention me? Did he mention me? Sports oh, fans are different. That? They're different. Yep. They are fanatics. Yeah, they're bleeding the blood. It's crazy. Anyway, it was interesting to me because I was like, who? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, he skated fast. That was great. I don't think it was that. I think he was just a dick. <laughs> he was a dick. He was playing for the Kings when I first moved out here and was actually going to games and stuff. And uh, so I did actually know who he was, but like he was just a little dick. I mean, he was I'm known for a being lot a of dick. hockey. I played lacrosse. Like, these people are dicks. Well, I'm familiar with these, these sports. <laughs> Did you really play lacrosse? Oh, yeah. That was the Connecticut sport, oh, lacrosse. Yeah. That's the most buttoned up hockey snooty yeah. shit I've ever heard. Is, oh, lacrosse is, I, I think, more more buttoned up than hockey by, oh, yeah. by, 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 by oh, some Oh, I margin. meant the uptight version of, like, yeah. a, lot of, a, lot, a lot of hockey still... and lacrosse players. There's, Vend- there's yeah. crossover. Same, yeah, there's a lot of crossover. Yeah, but if no, you you're right about money, lacrosse. Is, you got the, play the, lacrosse you got the sweater you on in the, sh- in the... It's very proper. I didn't mean to talk over you. Go ahead. That's if you have money, it's, the, it's it's just where you're from. I think it's not that if you have money or not, you choose to play that sport. It's just like, oh, there's a lot of money it, it in this was, area. It was this a big is what deal we do. in my town. So like the the cool kids played these things. So like the younger kids who aspired to try to be cool kids were like, maybe I'll play the sports that the top. Is. <laughs> were you? <laughs> was your town FCAC or was it WCCC or whatever I it was? Think supposed to, WCCS. I think FCAC. That's what we were too. And Wilton. Oh, we played. We played Wilton. Wilton fucked us up. <laughs> Routinely. Crazy, right? Because I was in the band, which was award-winning in, nice. in the band, the dancing band. But everyone talked about their award-winning <laughs> lacrosse team. I guess they were like yeah, they were, often they the were best nasty, in the state. Dude. They were, they were, and they were bigger than us, which pissed me. Off. Like I'm not a big dude; I just get wrecked. But like the band didn't go play for the lacrosse games. You know what I mean? We would go play for the football team, and they sucked. They yeah. lost everything because yeah. we were a lacrosse school, you know, so nobody put right. any money or effort into the <laughs> football team. That was that was similar to my to my upbringing. Oh man. Do you miss it at all, the East Coast? I don't think so, man. Really? I, I, so I do. Like, I, I think I, I do. miss New York City. I miss my crew of friends. I miss some of driving on these roads and whatnot. But like, true. The East Coast is is congested. It is intense for no reason. Like every everyone, when, however, clo- the closer you are to New York City, like the intensity of that town just like continues to to, to spin out, and spin out. And it's exciting mm. and interesting, but like I'm over it. I don't know. The but you mean the actual energy and buzz of uh, all of the people and yeah. all of the stuff. If if I ever went back to the East Coast, I, I would live in like a barn just far away from everything. And like, could, like Maine, not, can't, well, like no, I, or or you mean like you know some some upstate place that's just where, where other people don't want to live. I would live there on a somewhere where I couldn't see many neighbors, or at least I was surrounded by trees or something like. But this. you're describing Connecticut. It's all two acre yeah. zoning, yeah, and I mean, it's all woods. Yeah, up, <laughs> upstate New York, somewhere d- deep Connecticut. But like when you talk about uh, ninety minutes Wilton, outside the city, Darien, Greenwich, Ridgefield, there's there's just like mad traffic. There's if you're, a crazy amount of. People. If you're only an hour outside the city, you're too close. Yeah, you got to go two, a good solid two. It's it's like Beetlejuice rules. They were they were right. Yeah, and we can buy the whole damn town. Yeah, you remember that Winter River, Connecticut. <laughs> yeah, you go a little bit further out. So like when the schools start to really decline in quality, <laughs> like that's where I'm. In at. twenty years, that's where you want to own yeah, property. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Oh, you're hilarious. You're hilarious. Tell me more. Do today. Say, say it again. Well, you know, we. I really want your YouTube channel to be something. I want you to do something with it because I find you so funny. But if you're not going to do something with it, then I want you to do it here. So, <laughs> so I mean, I want to capitalize on this because you are feel, very – Feel free to capitalize. Dude, this is the greatest audience that I have. This is phenomenal. I love attention. It's great. You're funny. I Thank find you. you very creative. I find you oh, wow. weird, which to me is a – it's maybe trumps all of those other ones. We take those. Unique, weird. Um, it just I, – I like being around you. I know that when we first met, you didn't really believe that about me. You thought I was kind of just being <laughs> polite or something, I think. <laughs> I don't know what to expect from, from people that I meet in a parking lot on top of a mountain. 
Like, well, but so, you came so up far, there so knowing good. who you were going to meet. I mean, no, I, I came up thinking like there's probably going to be some cool cars, and the drive is great. And then I went up there, and uh, you know, some this, like let's talk to these people and see what see what this is about. I don't have any friends. I just moved to L.A. Uh, and it's it's so far so good. It's been working out pretty good. So you found that right after you moved to L.A. Pretty much. I I, I don't I, know if I realized that. Well, I just I just you? knew that Newcombs Ranch existed. Like like Newcombs. in Northern California, you have you have Alice's on you say Newcombs? Drive. Newcombs? Newcomb? Newcomb I hear Ranch. you. I'm curious. What you... <laughs> <laughs> Nuckums. Isn't it Nuckums? <laughs> it's... Nick, Nickum. You can say whatever you want. The man's name was Lynn Newcom. 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 Shit. I've never even thought about the pronunciation. I, feel I mean, like it's I just gone now, you. so I don't give a shit. I feel like I unplugged you and you're... 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 <laughs> you're, 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 you're unlo... Yeah. Calm, 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 All your calm, capacitors calm, are draining. Calm. <laughs> calm. Calm. He's in sleep mode. Oh, my God. That was great. I'm sorry. You were saying. So, yes, Newcombs has been on the map for a long time. Uh, yeah, so, like, there's Alice's in Northern California, and I was familiar with that because I was doing the same shit. Uh, when I was living up there, and so uh, uh, the the Cum Ranch in Southern California, I figured oh, I'd check you didn't that out. Just do that. Did you, what did you say? <laughs> this is, is this a family show? I thought, I thought we were in the nest. Are you we can not? say whatever you want. All right, uh, but it's on you. All right, cool. Yeah. So the Cum Ranch on the mountain. Uh, I, I figured it would be a similar scene where people ride their motorcycles up there, and there's some interesting cars, and then you get eggs, and it takes three and a half hours. And that, seems to be, that seems to be what I expected, and I was not disappointed. Oh, that was happening. Oh, look at this. Oh, I'm sorry. Someone's calling this oh, it's guy Reggie. again. It's Reggie. Oh, Reggie's calling it's again. Reggie, yeah. Hi, Reggie. Uh, hello? See if he knows my name. Hey, hey it's Newcombs. It's Newcombs. Uh, <laughs> How does he know? He got here like two weeks ago. <laughs> Just because he's bringing the donuts and the vegan coffee or whatever. He's... Uh, that's, all, that's all I wanted to add. Thank you, brother. Are you on your show right now? Yeah. I no, like no, the cross just, pollination. Just done. You're done. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. I'll talk yeah, to you later. Yeah, I'm sorry I won't be at Newcombs tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Reggie's going to be shooting uh, the Jay Leno show tomorrow. So, oh, so man. He, he's occupied. Won't so see won't Reggie see yet. It won't be with Reggie at the Cum Ranch uh, tomorrow. I, I've got something for Saturday. I'll send you a message. Okay, okay. All right, buddy. All right. Bye. Anyways, continue. You guys are awesome. <laughs> You're awesome. Talk Bye. to you later. Reggie, Reggie hits like a meteor. <laughs> And and it's like it's no it's no surprise everybody loves Reggie and it's for good reason he's just a pleasant person to be around yeah it's really really true it's great more more power to him uh, he you're uh, right but about stop him. calling during my special show right now please <laughs> he can call in every once I figured I'd bring the Instagram audience over because it's it's dwindling but um but there are still some people here and I wanted to see if I missed any questions or anything and I I don't know Michael tell us Mike did we lose, did I, is there anything I missed here somebody says uh, uh, oh Reggie watch says me here. And uh, he says, correct, about the East Coast. All right, good. He agrees <laughs> with you. He agrees with you in your summation of the East Coast. Right on. See, he's like monitoring he your show. I you to I... say the name of the place correctly. Yes. I, I pre- it's good for Reggie to keep an eye on me. Who knows where I'm going to go. I, I appreciate the, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the oversight. But you're a big fan I of comedy. I put the comment Did in, you know Jay, Reggie? Duke Nukem. What's that? I said I put the comment in Duke Nukem. Duke, Duke Nukem Drench. Played. Oh, Duke I think Nukem it was uh, Lynn Nukem was the guy's name, right? Yes. Yeah. Duke Nukem is a video game <clears throat> reference. So that's oh, there you I go. forgot about Duke Nukem. There you go. Nukem, like as in Nukem. Nuke them. Nuke, Nuke them. them. Yes. yes. <laughs> Nuke them. Nuke them. <laughs> it's not a tumor. <laughs> I'm sorry, Will. Uh, you're a big uh, comedy guy. Did yeah. you know Reggie Watts before he started coming to uh, uh, GVBC? I-, I saw him walk into a restaurant that I was eating at one time in, in no, Williamsburg, I mean, Brooklyn. I-, <laughs> I saw his show uh, before. Were you aware of – you're into comedy. Were you aware of him? Not did yeah. you know him personally. He did a whole spiel on Skirball where he's like, oh, man, I saw the Skirball championships. And it was a, and, and now every time Skirball, I drive like by the, the center? Skirball Center in Getty, I'm like – I'm reminded of – Friggin' Reggie Watts of all people because the, of this Skirball. The Skirball Center. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was like a, a it's a, a Jewish uh, something, right? They sh- they use it for movie locations all the time. I don't know what it is. I know that one day I drove by it and I I was like Skirball. That's funny. You can make some jokes about sports. Oh no, there's a sign for a different thing up there about it. Okay, no, I confused the two. I don't know what the hell it is now that I'm thinking about it. Is it art like the Getty? No. I mean, I I'm calling it art. You are okay. All right. I don't know. Then what continue. Is. Now I'm on the same page. Go ahead. I, 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 Reggie Watts did a bit about Skirball, and I was like, "That was a bit I was going to do. Good work, professional comedian." That's I, hilarious. I see you there. Did you ever see the movie Multiplicity? I don't think I did. Oh no! Come on, 80s. 
You're messing up. I don't up. think I did. Uh, well, you might not. It's a, it's a fine uh, Harold Ramis movie, Dearly Departed. Uh, he uh, directed it, but it's... Um, um, uh, Michael Keaton. Uh, there it Michael is. Keaton. Thank you. Oh, she got shit. it. Thank you, everybody. Michael Keaton and Andy McDowell. But he's he clones himself. He's you know got his, life's too busy, whatever, oh, and yes. he uh, doesn't have enough time for his work and his family and the fun time things he wants to do. So he clones himself. If only we could. All of this to say that institute where all of this science happens is actually the Skirball Center because my friend was the location manager on the movie because. He's Harold Ramis' brother. I'm sorry. Back to you. No, that works. I had to get it all out. I had, once I started, I had to get it all no, out. No, it's good. Back to me, though. Back to me. <laughs> and I don't remember to, what and I was talking thanks to producer about. Mike for chiming in there. He really is good. He, like, he genuinely has the, the – whatever. Go ahead. Back to you. His pulse on the finger. <laughs> there it is. Thank you. He knows what's up. Let's not go that far. <laughs> um, what other kind of comedy stuff? Like, you strike me as somebody who just would be – well, I mean, you know, who doesn't like comedy? It's well, funny. No, but more into that. You'd like, why aren't surprised. you doing it? Oh, it's because hard, you're... man. It's hard. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't have the balls to just get, get on a stage with a microphone. That's crazy. Not true. I think you should do it, and I look forward to it, but it takes some serious guts. Man. Oh, I'm ready now. No, no problem. I mean, like, it's not going to be good, but I'm, there's, I'm not afraid of it. I mean, it's not going to be good for a while, and then people get – like, you do stuff, you get better. Uh, it's a mistake. The first time I did – when I first moved out here, I tried it once, like, on an open mic, yeah. and uh, worst thing that ever could happen, did pretty well. Like, everyone was, like, laughing and, well, like, totally is, with me. That's, like, the hardest way to perform. And I've, I've tried to do a few little music things, and it's just, like, I w- harder than doing your own show. I watched other people go up, and I, wa- and I felt what was happening. Yeah. And I go, I, that, I can't. I can't yeah. handle, I George McFly did go, I couldn't handle that kind of rejection. Yeah, <laughs> and that's real. the truth. And it was at Laugh Factory, uh, Jamie Masada's place on Sunset, and I just moved out here, and they all knew me. Oh, man. It's I was like. It's just like that, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Like, that's Now, that's, that's not the place to start. The goddamn Laugh Factory. You don't have <laughs> well, to start. <laughs> right. You know, it could just, you could just go up to one of the pizza places or, you know, shops around town. Well, like, I, you know, I, I have friends that do stand-up, and they're, and they're funny. They're legit funny, but it's, like, it's a hell of a grind. And you have to just do it for years because it's not that's like. That's the truth. Some of it is how funny are you. That matters, of course. But it's also, like, circumstance, um, opportunities that you were ready for. If you want a sitcom out of the deal, yes. But if you just want to go perform and put a little art out there right, and get a little right. creative artistic release for yourself and then maybe even find out that it inspires you some in one of your other projects, that's all I meant by it. Not right. that not that you have to go turn it into a career of, hey, why aren't you a famous stand-up comedian yeah, on yeah, the Tonight yeah, Show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. <laughs> I mean, that, that's like that's like a lot of stress for like maybe some maybe some reward. Like your, two of your buddies are like, those funny dude look good. And you're like, oh, thanks, guys. Let's get out of here. <laughs> then maybe it's Let's a, get out of here before the next fucking shitty act comes on. Then maybe it's a, a, a growth and where you're at type thing because I used to feel like exactly what you're <clears> saying. <throat> and now I can't wait to do it simply because I can't wait to do it. Really? Yeah. Nice. I've had enough experience in my life, like burlesque shows, uh, things like that. You Probably were doing you have to. No, I, no, I no. Hosting, hosting. I can see that. Oh, hosting. oh, right. Hosting the. Okay. Hosting. Uh, beauty pageants, things like that when I first moved out here, the tux and the whole thing. There's a lot of directions you could go, J. Ron. Right. So all of that, uh, it's like, so, so I, whatever. And then standing here uh, up, just holding the mic, talking to people was enough to be like, it, it's, it, get out of your own way. Yeah, and right. that was for me, it, for you, it'll be whatever it is. But I just think that you'd be so good at it that I want to say, I'm being Thank selfish now. Much. I'm being, this is, this is me talking about, I'm being selfish because I want to see it. I want to share it with other people. I want other people to see it. Hey man, gas me up. See, see maybe something happens. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna do. We're do. I'm, here's part of this. We're doing some cars and comedy shows coming up. So like, I wanna. There's gonna be some big people, and I want some other people who are just kind of like, get the tomatoes. You know what I mean? <laughs> Let's fine. just see. That's fine. That's the Chris good. Elliott's where you don't know where it's gonna go, but you and I know <laughs> it's cool because we're into this. You know what I mean? Right on, man. Shit. There's a. It's not like I don't have time on my hands these days. Well, you always say that, but then whenever it comes down to like, hey, let's do something, you're pretty busy usually. You know, that's weird. It's it's it, t- time finds a way of disappearing, or like you just get your fingers in other things, and, and you're and you're doing crap. Uh, I, I I have cars that all need. I have a long. Li- I have a Trello board of all kinds of like car need. Like they're not needs needs, so I can defer and just drive it for another week or two. But there's um, a list. There's a there's a list. Uh, there's there's a big old list. We can segue right back into this 911 T. I love it. Uh, what kind of carbs did you do? People always want to know that. Uh, what kind it, of carbs? It came with it came with uh, with Weber's. Ooh, um, beauty! It was. Did you have to uh, rebuild? I mean, yeah. I, when I when I drove it home, it was it was farting and coughing and everything, and and 
and uh, it was it, it was driving okay. Um, the seller said it drives fantastic because uh, I guess he's never driven anything. Did they say drived? That uh, that would drove, that would have been a uh, that would have been a telltale for me. <laughs> it used to drive fantastic. It used to drive. It drives, fantastic. It drives great sure. when I parked it. Uh, yeah, I mean, so I, you know, I, I got this thing home. I started driving it around immediately, and and it was kind of it was it was it was shaking and, and, and coughing. So I did the first thing, which is. <clears throat> Pull the, pull the car. I, I, I looked at the air box. It had big holes in the air box where I think it had caught fire and melted or something like this. <laughs> like it, it was a plastic air box. No way. I mean, yeah, it had, it had big ass holes that went right around the air filter. So I'm just like, okay, so there's been no filter on this car for <laughs> however long. It's just running open. Yeah, it's just running open. So I, I, I yanked the carbs off the thing. I, I cleaned them with my, uh, with my ultrasonic cleaner and I dipped Ooh, it in that me. chem dip stuff for like a day. Um, and got oh, that bath? Clean. Yeah. And I, I looked at the jets, and the jets were, like, not all the same jets. So I, I don't know if somebody just put whatever in there at some point. I'm guessing they replaced yeah. what they needed to re- – the right. bad ones. With, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they they may have drilled holes. It, it was running well enough that they may have done the right thing. But, but I, I don't know. I got the, the right size things. And matching um, across yeah. the board. <laughs> right. Matching A matching kit with, like, proper <laughs> gaskets and all this shit. I support but, your decision. Yeah. I support this. Float balls and all, and all, the, all the good stuff. Uh, so I, I redid the carbs. I put the, the regular – air hats on them um and then i did the timing which was a a, kind of a pain um i I don't know if i got it right but i got it pretty good and and it it ran really good after that um it ran really well i got it corner balanced and aligned and it was better after that um after i got the alignment goes a long way right wheels on yeah it came with 14 inch wheels had these little donut tires that were what were the wheels what were the wheels they were they were fucks they were blue and chrome fucks Really, fourteen inches. Uh, yes, and um, is that what they were supposed to be back then? I don't think it was. No. Um, so if that sounds like a like a nine twelve type. Yeah, thing they're or they're for sale. If anybody wants five fourteen inch uh, of these of these Fuchs, they're all matching. Yeah, they're they're paint. They're, they have they're like blue. They match the car, and they're all matching. Right. So um, uh, f- fourteen by. Five, is that what five and a half, I think I want to say. Oh, five wheels at fourteen. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. Fourteen inches by five and a half. Yeah. Um, that's you will totally sell those. <laughs> that's those, those people will totally buy those. <laughs> uh, they're, I mean, they're, they're sitting around. I, they're not original to the car, so I, I have no love. Like, there's no love lost if I if I if they leave me. Um, I wanted I wanted 15s or 16s, and I was hoping to get seven or eights on there, but they won't they won't fit. I tried to squeeze two 25s onto the rear, but I don't have any kind of flare, no SC flare at all. So the the biggest I could get on the back was 205. Mm. And I figured that's pretty big. That's yeah, a lot of fine. rubber for that. Um, and I think I've one, I've one ninety fives on the front and two oh fives on the rear, six in the front and seven on the rear of those uh, aluminum steelies. I just um, wanted to interrupt you for a second so that yeah. you could see the comment that's on the screen. Oh, oh yeah, buddy! Let me take a picture of that shit. <laughs> that's going on my that's going on my tinders. Here, 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 let's do this. Let's do this. Yeah. Oh, I see. You're leaning in. Okay, well then I'll do this. All right. I like it. <laughs> I Is like this it. The television? I don't know. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> uh, so I don't know. I, I once I got the wheels and the tires on the thing, drove a lot better. Yeah, it drove a lot yeah. better with the alignment. Like the the ass was low and the front was high, and I, I got it. I raised it up ultimately because everybody slams these 911s, man. No, they drive and they better. They don't. They don't work. They they, they have to move with the bumps. It's Even the, the geometry. Throws. Yeah. Uh, the scrub radius gets all f- all fuckled. Well, and then these cars bump steer on. F- the sorry, bump but steer. they bump steer on their own. And then yeah. once you start doing that, it's just you, and then getting aggressive with the camber too. Like ours yeah. is a little too. It's sick for the racetrack, but it's a little too yeah. aggressive right now. Mine. I think yours is dialed in. It, it feels good. It, it, it'll bump steer quite a bit, but that's kind of fun. I um, I drove. I mean, did I go with you with, when we drove your car? Did uh, you with come? No, with you would have scared the crap out of me. That's, I just, I just don't wanted say you to that. Take the car. Uh, you don't some, really some mean of these, that. Some of these individuals that I go for a ride with, I'm like, all right, try not to be nerdy. Like, this is terrifying. Maybe I should say something. <laughs> like, well, they, like they, they haven't crashed in the in three years I've known them. Like, why would they crash today? They're not going to try to impress me, so whatever. <laughs> all right, give me names. Come on. Chris oh, has a camera. Dude, Misha made my stomach go. Misha made my Misha stomach go. Misha made my go stomach go in, yeah. in that, in that but, McLaren. Was it the – oh, in his own car. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, I, mean, I want to go for a ride with him in his own car. If they're driving my car, that's fine. My car is – Aren't fast enough to like really really scare me unless somebody does not know what they're doing. No, Misha uh, scared me for one second in uh, Kayla Marzo's uh, what's his f- Ferrari sedan. <laughs> oh yeah, the uh, the the Quadra Quadra Formaggio. That's it. That right. <laughs> Quattro. 
Valve Porte? Uh, Lamborghini Ducati. Uh, 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 it's, it's like the Quadrifoglio. Quadrifoglio. Yeah, whatever it is. Okay. Uh, Desmo um, Dronic. Yeah, and, but it wasn't the speed. I was just, I think he was probably feeling out the car, but I wasn't aware of it. So it felt like, oh, he's not very smooth. Well, he, Misha was doing a Snapchat when he was driving with me. So He was live. No, yeah, he was IG <laughs> he was live. Doing, he was doing a feed. <laughs> he was playing guitar, taking one of those turns. It was weird. Uh, uh, okay, okay. So in your car, nobody's going to scare you. But. So it wasn't you, though, that came with uh, me. Oh, Kurt in the juice. He, he scared me, too. He was like, let's go around this turn. And I was like, this car's old, dude. And he, and he was like, yeah, it's no problem. This is what we do. This is how we drive around. He wanted to show you what it could do. Yeah. Oh, no, I mean, I appreciate it. Um, but well, did he have it sideways and like, stuff? Oh, my goodness. No, 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 no. Nothing like that. Just uh, just <laughs> a little torsion in the yeah, chassis. I mean, things move. The, the, no the big car, deal. The cars move. No big deal. Uh, that's what's kind of what's fun about them. Um, so, you know, I, I, I got those are, things squared away. Are you happy with this car? Yeah, I am. I are, really am. Are you planning on keeping it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm uh, so happy to hear that. I, I, would, I, I think that that would be the last one to go. Um, may, maybe that, that might be a lie. Like maybe I just have some, some stupid EV to get me wherever I need to go to live a normal person's life. But, but of the I'd collector a, cars, that's the last. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I, if, if it was like, okay, if I just need to, I, I need to squeeze for like a year, I'd probably put like a roof rack on the thing and just figure it out. Oh, yeah. I know what you mean. Just to have one, the, like the yellow one car, car to do it all. Yeah. yeah. I, I'd have to do some stuff to it. But We thought four or five years ago that that would be a temporary. Or no, it wasn't that long ago. No, it was. It was about four years ago that we got rid of the last car. Uh, that we thought it would be sort of a temporary one car solution. Like, let's see how long we can do this. Because otherwise, it, our old us, we would have been at the dealership for the new yeah. lease before we turned on the old one. You yeah. know what I mean? I would have been picking out a car. Yeah. And, uh, and we thought we'd see how long it goes. It's been years. Yeah. It, it, it just covers a lot of bases. Like, it's a, it's a cool classic car that I can park next to a million-dollar Ferrari, and it shows well. Yeah. It, it, can, it can do another 100,000 miles without, you know, not, not needing too much. Um, it's already dirty, so it, it, it'll be nice and dirty and fine. And if I wanted to, like, I could take the thing on the highway for hours and hours, maybe with some earplugs or something. Or, like, <laughs> you know, I could put sound deadening in the thing. I could put AC in there if I wanted if to. If you wanted to, sure. Um, which I do, but also, like, maybe I'll just not drive it for one or two months a year and not spend $5,000 on that electric AC system or whatever the heck. Whatever one Paul Kennel's got, it's pretty good. He, his is, his is, uh, his is not gas powered, but like he, he has, like, he has the <laughs> compressor on the engine, and I think he has a couple condensers, but it's mostly stock. Paul's car is mostly stock, and I, I've been been listening to that. Um, a lot of people are just like keep it soft, keep rubber bushings and whatnot. Like I, I'd probably do some of the, some of the um those those uh, not elephant racing. Elephant racing has some too, but Re- rebel racing some of those bushings in the, in the front. Um, and in the rear as well, but for the most part, I think mostly rubber. I'd probably keep the torsion bars, maybe go one stiffer if I were to throw in some like digressively valve dampers or some adjustable KWs if I wanted to spend the crazy money like this. But like, if you if you if you stiffen these cars up too much, they don't they don't get better. They just make you feel like you're in a, a racier car. They don't totally. they won't get you around they won't get you around the corner any faster. And it's a compromise when you're driving through LA because it's a pothole and a pothole and a pothole. Um, so, uh, I do intend to redo the whole suspension at some point, but it would probably be mostly stock, bushing-wise, um, and maybe some cool dampers, but probably mostly stock stuff. Uh, you ended up with seats. You got seats, you changed your seats, I and did. you like the seats that you got. Yeah, they're, they're a lot better. So, the, the ones that were in there were these Mickey Mouse jokes. Uh, I think they're like, <laughs> just, just whatever, the cheapest seats you could put in a car to sell it on Bring a Trailer. Um, and, and I didn't like them. Nobody liked them. And I, I saw a set of 80 seats for sale for like 500 bucks or 600 bucks. And I was like, ah, you know, whatever. I'll just, I can sell them any, any day that I want. Yeah. So I bought them. I b- built a little bracket, metal bracket to, to get them to fit in the car, threw them in there. And now they're good enough. I had like big plans where I was going to get ventilated, heated, brown, uh, leather with like a cool, oh, uh, cow insert, you know, yeah. and all this stuff. That would have been I cool. I couldn't but... find anyone to make me these seats because nobody wants to build ventilated seats. Heated seats is no problem, but the real problem in a 911 is, is the heat. Um, so like that's another, that's on the list. I'm going to get some cool interior work done one day, but like. Heated is just electric. What, how yeah. do the cool ones work? Is there a, is there they, a, is they, there plumbing? They stick a fan, they impregnate a fan into the, uh, the cushion oh, on the bottom seat and in the it's back. It's just blowing cool air. Yeah, it just blows. It might even just blow ambient air. The goal is mainly, mainly but it's still, to keep it's your keeping back you from sweating. From sweating as it is right now for me in this hot seat. I know. 
Uh, There's going to be a lot of news about all of this stuff at some point soon. I'm, I've, I've, we've made some decisions, and as soon as they're approved yeah. at other places, so there will be a lot of changes around here. You won't point, sweat in that chair anymore. No, I mean, it's, I, I'm just sweating because I'm, I'm, I'm oh, I, oh, I think doing the chicken might dance. Be, people might be paying attention to me, so I'm, I'm getting a little nervous and whatnot. Yeah, so I didn't, want, I didn't want perfect to become the enemy of the good. So uh, you, you, you make progress. Yeah. You iterate, and you make progress, um, and eventually good enough becomes... Uh, good enough, and you, you leave oh, it at man. that. Amen to that. <laughs> Amen to all of that. So, like, right now, the car needs quite a bit of work, or it could use quite a bit of work, but, like, it's also pretty damn good as it is, so why don't I just wait for something to explode? Um, <laughs> I have I have a three-liter engine that I bought sitting under a bench for the day that the 2.2 gives up the ghost, um, which may never come, and I might just get eager and, and want to put the thing in. Mm. Um but I, I, I listen to a lot of people about what engine to get. Paul Kennel is, is one I keep going back to. He, he loves himself. The 2.7 MFI is his, yeah. is his favorite of all time. Yeah. Um, that's cool with me. Uh, I, I would go with, with EFI because nowadays you can get ITBs. You can get trigger crank fired, um, coil on plug, uh, ignition, and all this super great stuff that gets you the performance that's pretty much MFI with much less of the hassle. Same cost in the end. Damn. Um, but much less maintenance and hassle. Uh, and you get the cool ITB noises for, from them, um, independent throttle bodies. How deep in the weeds do you want anyone to get on this show about the technical bullshit of some niche air cool? I was trying to wrap it up. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm totally interested. I, I, what I'm amazed with every time is that you're – I always think – I always know how smart you are. And then every time oh. I'm always oh. uh, amazed that you're smarter than I previously thought you were. Oh, dear, Ryan. Um no, I mean you just you're able to <laughs> I, I rattle know, that stuff off. You know all the stuff. I of mean, course, you've done the research recently. Of course, it's top of mind. I get all that. This but I've just this is minutia. One, you also have the ability to do to work with all those things. Someone which is takes impressive. the Legos away. And you oh, need, screw you the need Legos. To do something. You need something. So I've been on. Pelican I was a Lincoln Log guy. I've never had anything. Uh, Renlist and Pelican. But Lincoln Logs are good. Those are good. That's a good remedial Lego. Um, that's remedial you should, yeah, Lego. You start I. There. Sir, <laughs> way, way harder. Sir, <laughs> yes. well, yeah, no, you got the long one and the short one, and then there's the medium one. You have to decide what you're gonna do and then plan it out. It can't just be like, well, I could use anything for this one. I could, I could use fourteen f- small ones or two big ones or one really big one. Yeah, it's it's just different. It's not better or worse. It's different. My, yeah. I apologize. That was just I was different. out of line. Remedial so. Lego. <laughs> Ouch. Although I'm pretty sure, yeah, that I would have had it first. No sharp edges, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, you're going to come back uh, regularly, I I'm think. here every Tuesday and Thursday. All right, beautiful. I love it. We've got a whole party going I'm here. we got Mike in Canada. Door. Well, we don't have Mike in Canada. we got hey, Wayne Will. Gretzky. Who else is? Oh, there he is. <laughs> Who else is on your wall there, Mike? I know that's the picture of you and Dave, the one from yesterday. Uh, and then- me and Dave. There's me and Joe Rogan, and then there's me interviewing Mick Foley. When did you uh, meet Joe Rogan? <clears throat> I've met Joe Rogan uh, multiple times. The last time was in 2014. But are, why are you a fan of comedy? Or uh, of his? Is Joe Rogan. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm a fan too. But I used to work with him on news radio, so like I, 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 I didn't know that you were. Uh, yeah, no, no, no. I met him at I met him at comedy shows, and and we had some a uh, couple nice nice moments, five minute moments, and included pictures and stuff. Dude, very cool, awesome. Yeah, we, we should have that somewhere where your head doesn't block it. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> That's very cool. Uh, awesome. Anyway, well, Canadian Mike up there, thank you for all your help. Will on camera three. How do so anyway, people? Big Port three liter seventy nine. Oh, no, there I'm you just go. Just how, how do people follow you and stay uh, up to date with you other than watching this show? I, I guess Raiden Motors. I'm on the Instagrams. Yep. Uh, and that's where they can see a lot of pictures of that beautiful car we're talking about too. Yeah. Yeah. At Raiden Motors, R A I D E N. Well, it's over here on the thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just like it says there on your screen. Yeah. At Raiden Motors. Um, I really appreciate you coming by, buddy. My pleasure, anytime. I, I'm very uh, fond of you as a person. I'm, I'm, I'm. I appreciate you as a friend, and it I. mutual, sir. And I like yeah. and enjoy you, you on this little uh, format here in this whatever this little thing is. Mm-hmm. I, I think you're. I think you're great. I think you're very affable, and as Reggie Watts put it, you're funny <laughs> AF. Right, everybody. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm super gassed up now. I can go home. And yeah. Then... Start your weekend. Start my weekend. Are you coming up uh, the mountain tomorrow? Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Good stuff. Um, All right. So thanks to Pants for yesterday and, uh, of course, to our uh, producer up there, Mike. Uh, um, 
I think we did it all, right? We've got it all. Is there anything I'm supposed to... Uh, do you know of anything I'm supposed to do or mention? GVBC tomorrow. Uh, I think we're going to be at Beverly Glen on Saturday, and I think we'll be in Malibu on Sunday, even though we weren't last week after we planned on being... <laughs> There's too much energy. We never talked about that this week, but that freaking... Uh, we went to a Cars and Coffee up in Santa Clarita that was... Oh, was this full at the blown dealer? car? Sh- yeah, full blown car show. There was no cars and coffee about it. I mean, this was like, if it was at night, they would have had the spot searchlights up in the air and all that stuff. It was crazy. Hypercars. Right on. It's hypercars. Hypercar cars and coffee. Ridiculous. Anyway, we were worn the hell out after that. Uh, but thank, but thanks to our friends at Santa Clarita Porsche, of course, <laughs> um, because it was uh, very nice. And uh, and I think that's it. All right, I love you. We love cover three. We love you. We I love you. <laughs> Mike in Canada, we love you. Peace and love. Love you. Uh, what you say it again? I said peace and love. Love you. Peace and love. Peace and love with peace and love. Always. <laughs> we love everybody. Uh, see you up at GBBC or out there somewhere. Have a great weekend.